Let's throw out the JSON files and let's do data gen. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses, such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles, and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. All right, we find ourselves back in the other ones more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be doing data gen. It's so our JSON files are all going to be thrown out. But let's first of all start by actually making the data gen. And then we can throw out the JSON files one step at a time. So in our tutorial mode package, we're going to right click new package called data gen. And the first question that some of you might ask is, what even is data gen? And the simple answer is, well, it is a way of generating all of the tag JSON files and all of the loot tables and all of the recipe JSON files and even the models in the block stage JSON files and in theory you could even do the lang although we're not going to do that because at that point it's not really any benefit because you still have to put in like literally exactly the same thing so in my mind you it really doesn't add anything but you could also add that as well then at the very beginning over here if you do not have a data generator class this means at the very beginning in the first tutorial if you follow the series through from the very beginning to now you did not check the data generator checkbox at the very beginning when downloading the template. I sadly don't know how you can add it after the fact. There is, of course, some way, right? You, you add the source set over here, you add the data generation runs, and you add this class. However, I have seen it not work for people even after adding everything correctly. So just keep in mind that you need to have this. If you don't, then you can either re-download the template or you can try to add it yourself. Just take a look at the GitHub repository linked in the description below. Basically, compare the build.gradle file, fabric mod JSON, and the classes and then hopefully you're going to get this to work. Anyway, let's jump in to the data gen package and we're going to add some custom classes over here. The first one is going to be the mod block tag provider. And the second one is going to be the mod item tag provider. The third one is going to be the mod loot table provider. And then we're going to have the wonderfully named mod model provider. There we go. And then one more, and that is the mod recipe provider there we go so five classes that we're going to need and we're going to start at the very top with the mod tags namely the block tags and this will extend the fabric tag provider dot block tag provider we're going to hover over this implement the configure method we're going to hover over this again create constructor matching super and that is actually all that we need and now instead of this configure method we can now add blocks to block tags so let's think about what we need we have some tags already here we have the needs tool level four we have our custom tag over here and we have some minecraft tags namely the pickaxe as well as the three needs x json tool let's start at the bottom over here with our custom tag to do this you want to call get or create tag builder you want to then pass in the tag over here so mod tags dot blocks dot metal detector detectable blocks and then dot add. So you can see we can add a block over here as an element. And we're going to add mod blocks dot ruby or if we were to keep it like this, then what it would generate is basically this. So this will generate, right? Should make a lot of sense, right? Because we've added only the ruby or to add all of the different other tags. What we want to do is we want to call the force add a tag over here. And we want to add block tags dot gold underscore ors. And then what we can do is we can just duplicate this a couple of times and then just get everything emerald ores. We also want to do the redstone ores. We want to get the lapis ores. We want to get the diamond ores. We want to get the iron ores. There's the copper ores. And is that all of them? Nope. There's also the coal ores. Not the combination step sounds, but the coal ores. There we go. That should generate exactly the same JSON file as we have there. And that's awesome. So we can then continue to the mineable. So I would do the, the pickaxe here next. So that's going to be get or create block tags dot pickaxe mineable. And we're going to add to this basically all of our blocks so this is going to be mod blocks dot raw ruby block and then let's just duplicate this a couple of times we want to then add the ruby block we want to add the ruby ore actually that's the ruby ore there you go the deep state ruby ore we want to add the nether ruby ore we also want to add the insta ruby ore and if you want to be completely consistent, you can also add the sound lock over here. So basically, every time you have a block that is mineable with a pickaxe, instead of adding it manually to the JSON file, you can now literally just add an add over here, add it in there, and that is also going to be absolutely amazing. For the needs X tool over here, I'm just going to copy over the relevant ones. So the diamond one is down here with the deep slate that had the deep slate in there. The iron tool had the raw ruby, and I just added the ruby ore here as well, and then the ruby block here is for the stone tool. Now the question is, how do we do the needs tool level four though? Well, we do this by saying get or create tag builder. We then say tag key dot of, and then we're going to make a literally get the key of this. So we're going to say registry keys blocks with a new identifier. 
of the fabric namespace, comma, needs underscore tool underscore level underscore four. And then after the last closing parenthesis, we're going to add mod block start and stone ruby ore because that is the one that should be mineable with netherite and up and there we go that is this class actually fully done highly recommended to basically take a look at this in the github repository as well because that's just going to make this a little bit easier and we can then proceed to go to the mod item tag provider now we're not actually going to use this one however it still is kind of important to add so fabric tag provider item tag provider implement the configure method and we're going to also create constructor matching super and we want to choose the second one over here there we go and that is pretty much all that we need to do now you can add item tags in our case we don't have them just yet but we might add them in the future as well so this is why this might be a good idea to add this now the loot tables well luckily we don't have any crazy loot tables so far but it's going to be interesting nonetheless so this is going to extend the fabric loot table provider right here and we're going to hover over this implement the generate method hover over this again create constructor matching super and now in this generate method we can add loot tables to drop the block itself incredibly easy you just say add drop and then you say mod block start ruby block and that's it this is going to now drop itself as easy as that for the raw ruby block the same thing for the sound block for example the same thing now there's a little bit of a difference when you want ore blocks to drop because they drop well something different right so you then say add drop we're going to say mod block start ruby ore and then the second parameter is going to be calling the builder over here the ore drops builder we're going to say mod block start ruby ore this is the block that gets dropped when you have silk touch. And then mod items dot raw ruby is the item that gets dropped normally. The issue, however, here is that the ore drops, right? There's a lot of stuff happening here, but it only drops one of them. And that is not quite what we want because we want a similar thing to the copper ore drop, right? Where it basically drops this with two to five different raw items. So what I'm personally going to do, I'm just going to copy over this method. The reason why we can't use this is because the raw copper over here is hard coded because of course it is. So we're going to just going to copy this over. And in theory, no errors should be present here. We're just going to make this so that we can read this a little bit nicer, even though, I mean, I don't know if this is necessarily nicer to read, but it is fair enough. And then instead of having this, first of all, we're going to rename this copper like ore drop. Copper like ore drops. I think that that's fine. And then we're going to say this is going to be the item and this is going to be the item. Instead of saying items raw copper, we're going to pass in the item right here. And that's actually all that we need to do. Instead of calling the ore drops, we can now just say copper like ore drops. And there you go. Now it's going to drop between two and five. And in theory, we can even pass in the floats over here or a uniform loot number provider and pass that in manually as well and then change it. But I think for the time being, this is fine. If you want to change that, that should be more or less just basic Java. Then we have the deep slate over here. We have the deep slate over here. Make sure to change this there as well. The nether and the nether. And then here we have the end stone and the end stone. Absolutely fantastic. And that is actually all of our loot generated as well. What I highly recommend you do is you do go through the block loot table generator class over here because that has basically all of the different well, loot table methods that we are using. And it is incredibly useful for you to take a look at that. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough. Basically, it is a very, very good thing to look at. But now let's proceed to the models over here which will actually be very interesting because this extends the fabric model provider. And we're going to hover over this. Implementing both the generate block states models method as well as the generate item models method. Hover over it again and create constructor matching super. And of course, there's two different things. The item models as well as the block state and the block models. Let's start with the item models. Very straightforward. We just take the item model generator, pass in here as a parameter. We're going to say item model generator dot register, passing in mod items dot, let's say Ruby. And then this is just models dot generated. That's it. Done. This is going, going to generate literally exactly this particular item model JSON file with the item generated parent over here. Absolutely fantastic. And what we can do is we can just duplicate this. This is the raw Ruby. And then I think we have a couple of other ones. This is going to be the coal bracket. We have the Chometo. And we also have the metal detector. And that should pretty much be everything that we need here in the item models. The block models. You might think that they are more complicated, but for the time being... They are not. They are going to get a little more complicated later down the line, but right now they are not. We're just going to once again take the block state model generator over here. We're going to register a simple cube all, and that is it. That is going to be mod block start ruby block. And then there you go. You can just duplicate this. This is the raw ruby block. We have the ore. This is the ruby ore. We have the deep state ruby ore the nether ruby ore and lastly the endstone ruby ore and we can also get the sound block and i think that that should be all of the blocks that we have so far indeed it is 
And that's actually going to be it. So the simple cube all obviously is just going to make a, well, simple cube all, right? So it is going to look exactly like this, right? With a cube all right here, specifically one texture named exactly like the block itself, but that is exactly what we have. So that's going to be awesome. This is going to generate the block stage JSON file as well as both block and item model JSON file with one call over here. Instead of copying everything over and changing everything, added one line and that is it. Absolutely freaking fantastic. Now we get to my favorite, and that is the recipes, because it's this so much better. So this extends the fabric recipe provider over here. We're going to hover over this, implement the generate method, and then we're going to hover over again, create constructor matching super, basically the thing that we've doing, been doing it the entire time. And now, get this, this is absolutely freaking crazy. What we're going to do is, when you think about the, what we have so far, right? We have a recipe for blasting and smelting raw ruby. But when you think about it, well, wait a second, in theory, all of our ore blocks should also be smeltable and blastable, right? Because obviously, how about what we do is we would put them in a list, right? And then this list could then be used for all of our different recipes. We can do this. We're going to make a private static list of, of item convertible. This is going to be the ruby underscore smelt ables. And this is going to be equal to a list dot of... And then we're just going to pass in mod items dot raw underscore ruby. What else can be smelted into ruby? Well, mod blocks dot ruby ore. We also have mod blocks dot deep slate ruby ore. We also have mod blocks dot nether ruby ore. And we also have mod blocks dot end stone ruby ore. All of those can be smelted into rubies. Now you might ask yourself, what are we going to do with this crazy list over here? We can actually even make this final because why not? And then the only thing you have to call is off our smelting, passing in the exporter that we get right here. And the second parameter you can see is a list of item convertibles. We say ruby underscore smeltables. The recipe category is going to be miscellaneous. The item that we're going to get out of this is the items, mod items that ruby. We get 0.7 experience. This is going to take for smelting 200 ticks. And the group is going to be ruby. This line here will generate one, two, three, four, five different smelting recipes. All going to be able to make all of those different blocks and items into a ruby by smelting it. Absolutely freaking awesome. And now, get even crazier, duplicate this line, offer, blasting, bam, done, change the cooking time to 100. Now you also got your five blasting recipes done in the second line. How freaking awesome is this? Instead of going through the recipe JSON files and like changing everything, one line, it's done. This is so awesome. But you think I'm done over here? Oh, please, I'm not done. Ruby to Ruby block and a Ruby from Ruby block. And it, basically the, the pattern over here where you put in nine rubies and get out a Ruby block. Well, that is actually a thing that exists. And that is the offer reversible compacting recipes right here. Passing in once again, the explorer as the first parameter. This is going to be, I believe the first one should be building blocks as a category mod items dot ruby this is the thing that you put of nine instead of the crafting table to actually get the, get the block and then the other one is the decorations let's say and then this is a mod blocks dot ruby block done this is going to generate both of them both the nine items instead of the crafting table to get the block as well as the block getting out the nine rubies again absolutely freaking fantastic. So these methods are incredibly useful. You can middle mouse button click on one of them and you can take a look at the recipe provider class. This offers you Every type of recipe that exists in vanilla, I cannot recommend enough to take a look at this. I mean, look at this craziness, right? You can offer slab recipes, creating stairs, trapdoor. It is so incredibly easy. Calling one method and then it just works is absolutely freaking fantastic. But if you want to have completely custom recipes, that might be the case. So we're going to call the shaped recipe JSON builder that create passing in the recipe category first and foremost, and then whatever you get out of it. So for example, a raw ruby here, and you can also pass in the count how many you're going to get out of this. I'm just going to do one because that makes sense. Now this is a shaped recipe, so we're going to need three patterns here again, and those are just normal strings. And let's say we're going to say SSS, SCS, and then SSS again, because the input is going to be the S here as a character is going to be the following. That is going to be items.stone. And then the other input, the C here in this case, is going to be mod items.ruby. Why not make this an R then? I don't know. I Maybe that makes a little bit more sense. There you go, making it an R. And now it's very important. You need to add a criterion over here. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Basically, the criterion is there for you to unlock this inside of your recipe book. This is needed, otherwise it's not going to generate. Now what you can do is you can just call has item over here 
and then items.stone, for example. After the first closing parenthesis, we're also going to call the conditions from item items.stone. And that's it. Then we're going to duplicate this and we're also going to pass in the mod items ruby here in both of them. And the basic idea is just that if you have either the stone or the ruby inside of your inventory, this particular recipe is going to unlock. And then lastly, you want to call the offer to. Here you want to pass in the exporter and then make a new identifier and then call the get recipe name mod items dot raw ruby here in this case. And now it's going to call this particular recipe the same name that the raw ruby is. You can, of course, change the identifier here as well. If you have multiple different recipes that get the raw ruby, it would both be called raw ruby and that would not work. So keep that in mind that you might want to change the identifier right here. But that is a thing that you can think about as well. And now that we've created all of those different classes, what are we going to do with them? Well, we're going to go into the tutorial mod data generator class that I've alluded to before. We're going to get the fabric data generator dot pack, which is going to be equal to the fabric, which is going to be equal to the fabric data generator dot create pack over here. Of course, it's going to be called pack. That's that would be a pretty good idea. And then literally, you just want to call pack dot add provider mod block tag provider colon colon new. We want to call pack dot add provider mod item tag provider colon colon new pack dot add provider. What is it exactly? Mod loot table provider colon colon new. We're going to fix that error in just a moment. We're going to say pack dot add provider mod model provider colon colon exactly new and then last but certainly not least the mod recipe provider colon colon new the reason why there's an error here if i middle mouse button click on this you can see this is a protected class you just want to make this public or the rather the constructor was protected now that it's public it is now available here and that is it this is all that we need to do and now on to the json files namely deleting them now, I want to caution you over here, do not delete your JSON files, because if you have an error over here and you delete all of the JSON files that you spend like maybe an hour or two on to creating, uh, that is not a good idea. What I want you to do is take the, all of the JSON files, the data folder and the assets folder and just save them, right? It's like save them anywhere, but put them outside of your project because you can't have the JSON files there. I'm going to delete them. I highly recommend you don't do so. So you want to get rid of the data folder. Right, so once again, I'm going to delete it. You want to get rid of the block states folder and the models folder. You want to keep the lang and the textures because obviously we're not generating the textures via code. That would be ridiculous. And we're also not get generating the lang here in this case. So just keep that in mind. But once you've done all of this and you're here, instead of Minecraft client, we're now going to choose data generation and we're going to hit the run over here. This is going to now call the data generation and it's going to generate all of our JSON files. Just be patient over here. It can take a little bit, but it shouldn't take too long. And what's most important here is that all providers took however many milliseconds and you can then see how many new JSON files have been written. They're now written under source, main, generated. And then right here, you can see the assets. Here are all our block state JSON files, our item model JSON files, our block model JSON files. They're all there, all of them done. The fabric, the needs tool JSON has been created in the data folder, tutorial mod, we even have some advancements. Now, the advancements here are for unlocking of the recipe book. So these just get generated automatically. So keep that in mind. We have the loot tables over here. We have the recipes that I talked about. You can see how many recipes that we just create in freaking 390 milliseconds. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And even our custom tag over here is there. And it has the same contents that we had before. Absolutely awesome. And this is the power of data gen. If I didn't convince you that data gen is awesome, that I don't know what, like, I don't, I don't even know anymore. I mean, I think this is absolutely freaking fantastic. I mean, even the, like the recipes themselves, like this is so freaking good. It is so easy to use. Uh, I, I just can't, like, it's so awesome. Just for sanity's sake, let's just jump into the game and I'm going to promise you everything is still going to work. So let's take a look. All right, finally, as you can see, everything is still here and everything is still works totally fine you can see the recipes are still working and i mean i don't even know what to show you right these this works this works everything here still works absolutely awesome and this is data gen i'm telling you data gen is going to come very handy especially in this video right here where we'll make all of those non-block blocks fences and all of that because those require crazy json files hope to see you in that video so yeah